welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about uh, super coiling of DNA now this sounds to be complicated topic and it is a little bit complicated topic in certain aspects and many students find it difficult to understand about what is a positive stranded DNA what is negative uh, coiling of the DNA then what is the super coiling and what is uh, the relaxed state of the DNA and so on so I will be finding answers to all those questions in this particular video so so be with me so let's begin with first things first actually I find this uh, this uh, PowerPoint presentation in the internet actually and uh, this is uh, I mean Bartholomew le lecture something like that that, that the, the source and I have placed the source file and also the source uh, destination in my description so actual credit goes to the developer of this uh, PowerPoint it's not developed by me it's a honest confession and uh, from the start of this presentation right but this is a tremendously good presentation for describing supercoiling of the DNA and that's why I'm I'm sharing it with you guys first is uh, let's talk about the topology right so what do you mean by topology topology means uh, the type and the physiometrical arrangement of, of certain things for example in case of DNA we know DNA is a helical uh, structure con structural molecule so if we talk about DNA it can be right-handed or left-handed helix because, because anytime when we're talking about a helix it can be right or left-handed now if we talk about right-handed supercoiling that means the DNA is coiled in the right-handed orientation now remind you that when you talk about supercoiling we not only talk about simple DNA structure we're talking about the DNA which is further folded because you know the strands of the DNA is kind of folded and wrapped around each other like a helical fashion similarly here the, the helix when that DNA itself is coiled with e e e e each, uh, its own uh, structure it is called super coiling of the DNA now it can be right handed coiling or left handed coiling now the right handed coiling is also termed as the negative supercoiling it also means the underwinding of the DNA on the other hand the left-handed supercoiling is called as the positive supercoiling right so never confuse them up because right-handed coiling means if you, if you take your right hand and place it you can see the thumb is on the top and all rest of the fingers are just are just wrapping it around in the counterclockwise direction on the other hand is a, so it's called the negative way of supercoiling and in left hand supercoiling if you take the left hand along with your thumbs up you can see the thumb is the direction of the axis of the DNA and rest of the fingers are just wrapping that thumb like the clockwise orientation and that's called the positive uh, supercoiling right so positive is clockwise negative anti-clockwise so these are the two important things I'm, I must say now the second thing here sorry okay so here we can see that this is the relaxed state of the DNA which is circular DNA by the way because you know in all these cases we are going to talk about more about the circular DNA which is found in the prokaryotic cell because in eukaryotic DNA we know they are mo most of the times linear and if you are having linear DNA there is not so much problem for supercoiling of the DNA because if there is linearity in the DNA if we if we uh, just turn all those uh, those strands uh, against each other or take them apart they can easily uh, come up but if it is a closed circular DNA it is not possible so in case of closed circular DNA many problems arise during uh, the replication process and transcription process and so on so this sorry where is it yeah so this is the relaxed state if you look at here this one is the super coil state of the DNA this is again another super coil state and this is another super coil so different super coil state of the DNA is provided now let's say another thing that the relaxed state of the DNA so you know the super coil state of the DNA is having kinds of bends in it you know this is the strand of the DNA which is itself helical now they are coiled with each other having bends so this is the super coiled DNA with bends but relaxed DNA will not have such bends so if you look at here this is a relaxed DNA and it does not have any kind of bends in it it's a kind of circular covalently closed DNA 
and there is a number say L equals to 26. L stands for the linking number and what is it we will be learning that later. Now let's talk about the supercoiling math a little bit. Now the numerical expression of supercoiling is denoted by LK equals to TW plus WR. Now you know LK is termed for the linking number. It says the number of times that one DNA strand winds about the other strand and this is always an integer value. It should never be any kind of float variable. This is always an integer value. It should be an integer value, right? And it is equals to TW plus WR. Now here T is a TW or whatever it is, it is called as twist, right? T for twist. The number of revolutions about the duplex helix. Now it might be complicated uh, for this term to understand. Actually twist means the number of times uh, one strand of the DNA is wrapped around another strand, right? It's actually like LK or linking number that I've talked about, but actually the twist is the number of uh, number of impressions or, or crossing between uh, two different strands of the DNA. That's called the twist. And right here is the number of turn of the duplex axis about the superhelical axis. We'll be talking about it later. So, so here let's say, let's talk about it. So we know what is linking number. The number of times that one DNA strand is wrapped around or winds about the other strand. And this is always an integer. So if you look at here, this is one circular DNA. This is another circular DNA. They are winds uh, about each other or wrapped around each other once. So the linking number will be 1. Now in this case, if we see this one is, is again two different circular DNA, but the interaction of both the DNAs with each other is 1, 2, 3, 4. So how many points as you can see? 1. So, the, so how many times it's getting wrapped? Once, twice, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So 6 times this DNA is wrapped around this other DNA. So the linking number for this will be 6, right? So that's the linking number, 6. Actually, these are not separate DNAs. D these are the same DNA and different strands actually. So the number of times strands are coiled with each other, right? So in this case once, in this case 6 times. So the linking number in this case will be 6. Now what is, you know, ride? So here if you look at here, this is the helix, double helix structure of the DNA and this middle thing is the axis, right? Now if you look at here, if we just close both this terminal regions, it will form a circular DNA. And if we, if we look this circular DNA carefully, we can find that each of this, this uh, ribbon-like structure is consisting of actually two strands and helical structure of the DNA. Right, so DNA helix is making this circle. Now, this circle itself will coil with each other. That coiling is called as the DNA supercoiling. That's why it's called supercoiling because you know DNA is itself coiled because the two different strands of the DNA are itself coiled around each other. Now, after coiling, those DNA, if they further coil uh, with each other, that's called the supercoiling. So here, here is the supercoiling that we found. Now right, you know, the number of turns of the duplex axis about the superhelical axis. By definition, the measure of the degree of supercoiling is done using this right. So if you look at here, here, so actually uh, the number of turns, the duplex axis, the number of turns of the duplex axis about the superhelical axis. So you know, this is the duplex axis, the complete. And the axis of the duplex is this middle one. So if we, if, we, if we follow the middle axis, we can find a circle like that. Now that axis is further coiled along the superhelical axis because the superhelical axis, if we imaginary draw superhelical axis vertically, we will draw it like this, from top to bottom. So you can see, now this, this double helical axis is wrapped around this superhelical axis, one, two, three, three times. So the ride for this supercoiled DNA is three, right? And the linking number, as you know, how many times they are crossed each other, 
right so and 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 the twist actually how many times they crossed each other like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so the twist here is 10 and the ride here is 3 so we can find the linking number pretty easily right so similarly if we look at here if we look at here this is the axis so the this red thing that's drawn is the axis now if we are having large riding numbers right so large riding number means more so 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 those strands or the duplex is crossing the superhelical axis more times so it will give us very small twist right but if we are having small riding number it will give us larger twist because you know if you are if you are making more super coil it will give you more riding number as a result of that the twist will become less but as you are making it less super coiled less small number of rides it will give you large twist so they are kind of opposite in that sense so this is a analogical expression of how the super coiling looks like so imagine this helical structure is just kind of looking like DNA strand so normal telephone wire so this is a coil DNA strand. So this is a double helical strand. Now if this double helical strand is further coiled around itself, that coiling is called the super coiling, just like this one. So if you look at here, each time they cross against each other is the twist. Now each time the whole DNA structure coiled about each other is a, is a right. So one, two, three. Here you can see three rights. Right? Now finally, the specific linking difference can be calculated and it can give us the super helical density which is formed by LK divided by LK0 or LK0 right so LK means the linking number now the linking number of the super helix uh, helical content by linking number of 0 so what is it let's talk about it so if this is a circular DNA again covalently closed circular DNA let's say the linking number here is 200 that means uh, one strand of the DNA is crossing another strand of the DNA 200 times so linking number is 200 and that number is constant for normal linking number and linking number not or LK not now suppose we are having a strand break somewhere here strand nick somewhere here that nick can give us a different linking number but we don't know what is the linking number is that's why they suggested that LK undefined but if we know that the linking number is reduced by 2 that means we just unwind those two different strands of the DNA in two different points so it will give us LK minus 2 so ultimately previously it was 200 now it is minus 2 getting us LK equals to 198 so this one is a new linking number after after getting after unwinding the DNA strands twice in the two different points. So if you talk here the li relaxed DNA again linking number of 200 and if we are having if you unwind this DNA two different strands if you unwind the two different strands in two different points it will give us minus 2 linking number it will generate a negative super coil that's how the negativity and positivity determine guys so LK equals to 200 now linking number is reduced by 2 it will give the super coiling called negative because you know once every time you're changing the linking number you must apply right or you must take out right that's why it's called it, it is turning your DNA into a super coiled DNA right so normally once we are having the linking number of 200 our DNA was relaxed but now once we are just unwinding this in two different points it will rise a tension in the DNA and that to, to release that tension the DNA wrap around itself the double helical axis wraps around another axis which is called the super helical axis and they form a super helic or not like structure like this now as we are having linking number going down twice it is getting us negative super coil having the linking number less than the previous time 198 previously 200 on the other hand if we uh, additionally add two different turns 
two different turns of those DNA strands in two different points it will add the two linking number so linking number is added plus two and this delta LK means the change in the linking number and it is suggesting as plus two means two new uh, twists are added there as a result of that the total number of linkage linking so 200 plus 2 it will be 202 and it will be called as positive supercoil right so negative supercoil and positive supercoil formed in this way okay but you look at it carefully it might look same but they are not the same because you know the direction of the coiling is different in both both these two cases right so if you take this one and turn upside 180 degree and you can see the same kind of structure like this right so if you change the linking number by 2 minus 2 it will give you a negative 1 if we are adding plus so plus 2 it will give you a positive supercoil now this is very very important guys this is the demonstration of how linking number change is actually occurring so let's say this is a closed circular DNA again right now let's imagine before the folding let's imagine it in this way now if you, you can see it and you can say that is it folded but it's actually not folded it's the presentation of how this can be done so this is the process still this is not folded because because look at it carefully you can see that none of the strands crossed each other if they are simply arranged in this way so they are not actually super coiled in this picture and what we say here this one as a plus this one as a minus so plus minus gives us the linking number of zero that's how you can memorize things and this is the basic and most easiest way to to look for plus and minus and positive and negative coiling guys so be careful so this is not super coiled two regions we designated them plus minus plus minus cancel each other out the linking number is zero now let's imagine this strand at the back have a cleave so it is cleaved in a particular region so you can see here it's cleaved so now it is not plus now what they did here they cleave that one and bring that up front previously it was at the back but now after this cleaving they bring it, it into the front as you're bringing it into the front what you are doing you're changing this coiling pattern because previously it was not coiled but now you are transferring one strand across another and that will create a coiling right now previously it was plus but due to this change we call it a minus so now previously plus minus cancel so linking number change was zero but now what we know the change in the linking number is minus minus so minus two is going to be the linking number change so if the previous times the linking number was say 200 now the change in linking number is minus 2 so it will be 198 right so delta LK means not not the linking number it is the linking number change right definitely it should have a linking number linking number never should be 0 right so in all these cases okay so what we know now the unraveling the DNA at one position changes the super helicity and the super helical pattern why because if we change the super helical pattern at one position or unravel in the DNA strand at one position it will provide some extra stress to that total DNA structure and as a result of this extra stress the DNA will behave differently they will fold along its own axis to give what is called ride right so here it is this is the DNA you know if you just unwind from one place what it does actually it gener generate enormous amount of stress into the DNA strand and it will start coiling on its own you probably heard this you probably uh, witnessed this thing with ropes with telephone wires and with with many other things many times that's how this uh, this super coiling actually works so always try to uh, implicate the knowledge of analogical aspect of your daily life uh, to whatever you're learning now this is a structure you know the relaxed DNA which is having eight turns if we calculate one two three four five six seven so eight turns one two three four five six seven eight right so eight turns are there 
And if we look at here now, it is having seven turns and it is kind of straightened. One turn is gone. Right? So due to this one turn change, now let's think both of these terminals are arranged, they are added, they are linked. If they are, if this, this DNA are, uh, let's say, uh, the linear DNA, we don't need to worry about. Because you know, in linear DNA, if this part of the linear DNA is free, then providing the pressure will not generate any change because from this end it will it will release the tension it will release the stress but if it is blocked and or if it is if both the terminals are added with each other linked with each other then it can create some problem so you know here if we arrange them supercoil is formed now due to the change in one turn you know one twist we just change one twist due to the change it, it provides a tension, it provides a stress. Due to the stress, it creates a supercoil. And actually, supercoil means it forms one ride. So we just release one twist and it will form one ride. Now, here comes the rule of the thumb. Now, the total linking number most of the times are kind of remain constant. So if the linking number needs to be constant throughout the time, you know, linking number equals to twist plus ride. So if we uh, decrease twist they need to increase the ride to compensate that right so that's how the whole thing actually works so you know we just decrease the twist by one so for that reason it will add one ride form super coil with one particular position and this ride gives the plus minus effect and the linking number remains constant there right and during the stand separation we can do many things like we can we can take a part we can take a particular point and peel those two strands apart from each other for the separation process now here we are having the uh, the dna linear linear dna linking number is 10 twist is also 10 and ride is 0 because you know until and unless you are having the super coil structure we you will not have any ride now if you unwind one turn so suppose one turn is simply unwinded there. As a result of that, we know the twist number is changed because the twist is now 9 instead of 10. Similarly, as the twist is going low, ride is the constant value, linking number will also go low. So linking number is also 9 because there is no change in the ride yet. It is making kind of circle. Then it, we join both those ends together to form a closed circle. Once we form the closed circle, now still in this circle, we are having the linking number of 9, twist of 9, ride of 0. Now, in this closed circular form, if we further change topologically a little bit, suppose we initiate one turn, we reinitiate one particular turn in this closed form. Because previously it was relaxed, so whatever we did, we just unwind or add a turn, it won't mind a much, it won't change a much. But in this case, if we, if we add one twist further, so now twist is 10 from 9. Due to this change, you know, it creates the tension and stress starts to build up. Due to this stress, to compensate with this stress, it needs to form a super coiling. So the DNA double helix needs to be coiled along its own axis. It forms a super coiled DNA. So it gives one ride. And remember I've told you the linking number should be constant. So you know previously the linking number was 9. So to, to make the linking number constant. Now due to the addition of one twist it will change the linking number. So if we add one twist make the twist 10 the linking number always be 10. But to compensate that and keep that in 9, we need to take one ride out. So we need to create a minus 1 in the ride value. As a result of that, according to the equation, L equals to T plus W. If the T is added once and if we delete one as a ride, it will give us the constant value of the linking number. Right? So here, to make this linking number constant as L equals to 9, 1 further ride is added and the ride is added in the negative fashion so ride is now equals to minus 1 twist remains 10 linking number more importantly remains 
nine, which is a constant value here. Similarly, you can do the same thing from this linear DNA, but if you turn this DNA and create the tension, otherwise it won't do that. Now the supercoiling of the DNA. Now normally the DNA compaction requires a special form of supercoiling. You know, because supercoiling is required inside the cell in many aspects. Because our DNA is very very large and for a small cell to hold that DNA, it is very very difficult. To cope up with all this situation, we need to have more supercoils in our, inside, our, uh, inside our DNA. Right? So for that reason, supercoils are very very important in many aspects. So in this case, uh, we've seen uh, one such thing how to do that. But actually, here for the compaction of the DNA, we need to have two general type of supercoiling. One is interwound coiling. Another one is a toroidal type of coiling. Now the interwound coiling is the supercoiling of DNA in solutions. But the toroidal coiling is a tight left-handed turns. Remind you, toroidal is always is a tight left-handed turns packing of the DNA. It is usually wrapping of the DNA around other components like proteins and other materials to have something solid in it. So you can see here, for getting a toroidal coiling, it needs to have a kind of base onto which it can wrap itself tightly. This is the toroidal type. But in, on the other hand, the interwound ones that we have already talked before all the previous descriptions, that this DNA is itself coiled around its own axis, like this. Right? Now, we can uh, measure the supercoiling and we can find whether the DNA is supercoiled or not having or uh, using different techniques like gel electrophoresis and density sedimentation process. In the gel electrophoresis, we load the DNA material onto the uh, agarose gel and we run it based on the molecular density and based on their molecular weight, they are separated according to their limit actually, the place. If the small so if the, the small uh, one is there, which is supercoiled one, which will migrate really, really fast, right? And uh, the linear one will migrate, and then the nicked one will migrate later. And on the other hand, the density sedimentation process, we can separate them according to their uh, densities. So if you look at here, supercoiled DNA is highly coiled. It becomes very, very small. As it becomes very small, it is very easy for them to pass through the pore of agar, agarose actually. And they can migrate from uh, the plus end towards, sorry, from the minus end towards the plus end very, very fast, right? So that's why we get uh, supercoiled DNA at the bottom and relaxed DNA at the top. On the other hand, if you look at uh, the density sedimentation, in the density sedimentation process, what we know is that supercoils or uh, supercoiled DNA that we can see here are placed at the top kind of kind of shallow regions like this. Sl slight supercoils are fine after that and normal relaxed DNAs are densely arranged. So the dense DNA sedimentation velocity actually is more for the supercoiled and least for the relaxed one. Because you know as you are making more and more coils, it becomes more dense, right? Because normally, when you are having linear DNA or simply closed circular DNA, the density of the DNA is less. So the velocity of density is higher for supercoiled ones, highly supercoiled ones, than the supercoiled ones, and the velocity is least for the general coiled DNA or single-stranded DNA. Now, the supercoiling of the DNA is brought about by special type of proteins. For example, topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase 2. There are many types, type 1 and type 2 of topoisomerases, right? Now, those topoisomerases are enzymes that are required to relieve the torsional strain that arised due to any kind of change in the twist and all these things inside the DNA. So, any times if we need to form a uh, superhelix, or uh, so, supercoil or if you need to break a supercoil, we require topoisomerase proteins, right? So topoisomerase 1 breaks 
only one strand and pass it along with other strand to change the linking number. On the other hand, topoisomer S2 breaks both the strands together, then pass them along with each other to change the right, right? So let's talk about here. So here we know this is the action of topoisomer S1. You know, if we talk about the DNA turns, so you have n number of turns, for example. Now this is a representation of the topoisomer S1 activity like a scissor. It will cleave one particular strand, pass this green strand through this purple strand, and then reseal this. So as a result now, the number of turns is low by one, because one turn is unwinded. So previously the number of turn was n, now it is n minus one number of turns in the duplex DNA. Here you can see in the closed, in, in the double, uh, actually closed circle DNA, one strand is cleaved, passed through another strand, resealed. Now topoisomer is one as I've seen that uh, breaks only one strand. It's a monomeric protein having one particular domain there. So let's, so actually we don't have any uh, structural image but it, they are giving us uh, the examples and other detailed like, information about this thing that E. coli topo 1 relaxes the negatively supercoiled DNA actually, right, by cleaving and, and taking two strands out by one particular point, right, and it introduces a change of increments of one in right. So as it is, it is, you can see here, it is just making the turn low by one, so to make the linking number constant, it should add one right, so it creates one right, deletes one turn, and as a result, it relaxes the negatively supercoiled DNA, right? On the other hand, topoisomer S2 breaks both the strand. It is a kind of, it is having tyrosine in their active side which hold on to the strand, it will break it up and, and pass another strand through it. Now for this huge task to be done, they require energy as a form of ATP. Use ATP hydrolysis energy and then do the task. It is two subunit protein, two alpha subunit, two beta subunit containing protein. So it is actually becomes co covalently linked with the alpha subunit and it relaxes both negative and positively supercoiled DNA. You know, so topoisomerases in both topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase 2, they both relaxes the supercoiled DNA. But topoisomerase 1 only relaxes the negatively supercoiled DNA by deleting one turn, adding one right, and topoisomerase 2 is relaxing negative and positively supercoiled DNA and it introduces two rides, add two rides minus two turn, right? So relaxes by two turn, adding two rides. Here it is. This is another representation of the topoisomer S2 activity. Cleave both the strands all together, passes another strand through it, seal it now. Due to this, they form two different turns. So as a result of that, two turns are separated, as a result of that, two rides are added. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind the topoisomerases, and I hope this tutorial is helping you to understand uh, the process of DNA supercoiling and how the DNA is supercoiled and the role of topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase 2 in the DNA supercoiling. That's it, guys. Thank you.